In today's tutorial, let's do the slouching at the peak cap. This is the sister of the top peak cap too. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today, we're gonna play with this design. This is called Slouching at the Peak Cap. This is the sister of the top peak cap that is really, really quite popular. There's a fundamental difference between the two other than the design of stitches, but also the shape. Also comes with a visor and you can put a button right at the top here just like it was in the original and I'll show you the original in just one second. You're gonna need two sizes of crochet hooks today. You're gonna need a nine millimeter size M or and <laughs> and or you need both so you need a size M or nine millimeter and you need a size K six and a half millimeter that is currently in my hand. Two balls of Peyton's wool bulky in order to make this yarn today and let me take you through a little bit of this pattern and show you the original design and tell you what the difference is. So let's take a quick look at this pattern. The fundamental difference between this cap and the other one is that you see it has more of a rounded top on it. Other than the stitch work being slightly different, it has the same visor kind of look as the original. So let's take a look at the original here. And the difference is with this one here, other than the stitch counts uh, and um, stitching being different, it has a flat top like here. This is not a photographic um, um, change. This is actually real and the back of the cap had a flat look to it. So this one has more of a rounded top to it and I think this one is quicker to complete because the stitches are less complicated than this one as well. But this one is exceptionally popular and you see the button here, you can do the same look here and the visor would probably do the same kind of concept of just coming out into the top. It's harder to get that same look when it's laying down on a filming table like this but chances are it'll look really amazing as well if you're wearing it. So without further ado, let's grab our Peyton's Classic Wool and it's bulky and we're gonna be playing with this yarn today and we're gonna start with our large hook first, a nine millimeter size M. So get that ready, get your yarn ready and let's get going. So within today's pattern, we're going to be working with the diagram here. We also have the written instructions as I've already shown you here. And we're gonna be playing with this particular design and you can follow along and this is a great opportunity to learn how to read these designs if you're following along with this as well. So this is a, a really kind of a great opportunity. I love these kind of diagrams. So this here is the main hat until it gets to um, the end of the pattern and then we're going to um, then go to the brim area and this is the brim and do you see that this is a smaller circle? This represents the stitches that you see on the outside here and that is exactly how we're gonna do the brim and that's what we're gonna do. So let's grab our yarn and let's. So let's play and we're gonna create a slip knot to begin. I'm using a size L eight millimeter. I'm a loose crocheter so I've gone down one hook size in order to compensate for my looseness. It's something that I know about myself so if you see okay well you're using the wrong size hook that's because I'm compensating for my own um, particular tension. So you may have to do the same thing. So that's a choice that's left up to you. So let's uh, chain four. So one, two, three, and four and let's insert our hook into the beginning chain and then yarn over and then pull through. And now <laughs> if I did it properly and now when I go to do that I'll have the center ring of the top of my hat. What I want to do this straggler I want to just leave around the outside here so that I can bury it as I go and it's just an easy way to do it instead of having to weave that in later. Let's move along to the first round and all of this is relatively easy when you break it down step by step. So round number one, let's keep that uh, straggler down around the outside so it gets stuck and we're going to chain three which counts as a double crochet. So one, two, three and now we're gonna go inside the ring for 11 double crochets in a row. So just keep going inside the ring, yarn over, pull through, pull through two and two and keep doing that all the way around. So with that chaining of three that you started with that counts as a double crochet plus the 11 double crochet that you're physically doing, you will have a total of 12 going all the way around and it's so important to get that count right the very first time because you'll be in trouble if you don't. So please go all the way around and get 12 of these done. So one, two, three, four, five and six. I'm already halfway through and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I now have 12 going all the way around. Here's my straggler that's hanging out. I can simply trim that out out of the way. Now you're gonna notice that the middle of this circle is quite uh, big. So at the very end of this what I'm gonna do is take a few ec or an extra strand and just kinda just put it together with the darning needle and close off that center ring just like that. So once you confirm you have your 12 you can be able to count those just a uh, slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three that you had started with uh, to finish the final ring all the way around. Let's move along to round number two. 
So let's start round number two. We're gonna be playing with the back loops only and if you're new to crochet let me show you something. So these two strands equal a stitch. If you go into just one of them, the one that's closest to you, that's a front loop and the one that's away from you is the back loop. So we're gonna be playing in the back loops on this round here. Some of this uh, stitch work that we are doing today we are gonna be playing within the back loops um, and you've gotta pay attention to when we do that. So we're gonna chain up three. So one, two, three. Coming down into the same stitch where you did the join I want you to do another double crochet. So that's the only one that you're not gonna worry about doing the back loops on this particular revolution. All the rest of them you want to. So what you need to do for the remainder of all of these that are left in the back loop only so just skip over go into the one strand that's farthest away from you. I want you to place two double crochets into each one of these back loops going all the way around. So there will be 12 groups of two going all the way around when you complete this round. So just two double crochets into the back loop in each stitch going all the way around. So now I'm all the way back around and a lot of people think that this last one here is a stitch and it's not. It's leaning toward here. So this is one of the big fundamental mistakes that a lot of people make right off the get go when they're new. So you should be able to count 12 groups of two. So if you just look at in groups of two you should be able to count and there should be 12 and in my case there is. So that means that it's done. So if you put an extra one in here which appears to be an extra one then you're gonna end up with 13 groups of two and all the rest of your hat will be thrown out of balance and it will be too big for you at the end. So now that you have your 12 groups of two just slide your hook into the top of the beginning chain three and just close it with the slip stitch and see that just closed everything. So that's one of those uh, confusing things. I know it took me a few years to get a hold of that uh, concept as well. So let's please move on. Let's go to round number three. So round number three is about keeping in balance as well as getting bigger at the same time. So let's begin. We're gonna chain three. One, two, three counts as a double crochet and in the same space right underneath we're gonna add another double crochet. So we've just kind of put two double crochets into the same space. So the repeat pattern on this one we again going into the back loops only. The next one will be one double crochet into the next back loop only and that's it. Now the next one is going to be two double crochets into that back loop. So the repeat pattern for this whole revolution will be the same. So the next one is one double crochet into the back loop into the next one. And that's it for that one and then the next one will have two. So just think about it. It's one, two, one, two. And please do that all the way around for round number three and I'll see you at the end of this revolution. So finishing up round number three the very final one will be one double crochet that sits by itself and the reason for that is that we started off with two in the beginning so it went two, one, two, one all the way around. Remember this one last one that appears to be one is not one. It's part of this and you're just gonna attach to the top of the beginning chain three to conclude off round number three. Let's move along to round number four. So let's begin round number four. It's identical to round number three. We're gonna chain up three, one, two and three right into the same one that you did to join. It's going to be another double crochet so that means that there's two into that one. So continuing along in the back loops only the next one is just one double crochet and it's just like round number three. The next one then will be two double crochet into the same one. Do you get that? That's unusual to see that kind of idea in a pattern. I understand why they're doing it. It's helping the, the hat to make a turn to go over your head properly. So the next one then to keeping a pattern is one by itself a double crochet and then the next one is two into the same one keeping in the back loops only to keep those um, pattern looking consistent. So please do that all the way around for number four. So again as you come back around for round number four the final one will be one double crochet into the back loop and that's keeping within the pattern and remember this one that's leaning over just ignore it. It's just there to fool you. So let's just join it to the top of the beginning chain three. Let's move on to round number five. This pattern is actually looking pretty nice. So we'll uh, see you in a second for round number five. So round number five is the dominant look of this hat. So we're gonna chain up three and I'm gonna start explaining. So we'll chain up three. So you'll notice in the pattern it looks like it's leaning like this toward an angle because it's gonna create a crisscross. So the other one is gonna be done in the back loop of the stitch prior to this. So we actually have to go back one. So we wrap the hook and we move this out of the way and we go for the back loop of the one before. Yarn over pull through and then just double crochet as usual. 
there's no increments of growth in this one. So it's just gonna create a really three dimensional look. So to do the next one, this here is part of the next stitch. We wanna go to the second one over and we wanna double crochet into the back loop only. Okay, so that means that we skipped over one that you see here. So just yarn over and just move it out of the way and go to the one that you skipped in the back loop only and double crochet. I'll show you again. So do you see it's creating a crisscross. So skip the next one, go to the second over, do a double crochet. Okay, just yarn over now, just move it out of the way and go into the back loop of the one that was skipped. I'll show you one more time. Okay, so here's the next one, go to the second over, double crochet. Okay, and then yarn over it, move it out of the way and go to the back loop that you skipped. And continue to do that all the way around for round number five. So I'm coming up all the way around. I only have two stitches left. That means my stitch counts are right. And because the other ones you see it's leaning towards the, the one that we had started with. So I'm just continuing along and just uh, gonna get it done. And then we're gonna move on to round number six. So round number six is actually very really easy as well. So we attached it to the top of the beginning chain three and that'll keep everything in balance and now you have a really great feature that appears on the outside. Let's move along to round number six. So round number six we're gonna chain up one and then we're not gonna worry about any back loops at this time. So just going right directly into the same stitch that you did the join with and then into every stitch going all the way around you want to do one single crochet. So just one single crochet into every stitch going all the way around and this will kind of lock in that um, twist look, that uh, crisscross look and it will be really amazing. So let's move along and do this for round number six. Okay, so that's the last one is next and that's it. So one single crochet went into every one and so you're just gonna join it to the top of the beginning single crochet that you had started with just like that. Let's move along to round number seven. And round number seven is again a crisscross but we're not gonna worry about back loops this time. So we're gonna chain up three, one, two, three and again going into the back, uh, the last one that you were. So remember this is not it here. This is part of that stitch. Go into the one there, lean it forward and go right into both of those strands which is one complete stitch. So no back loops this time and I want you to crisscross going again all the way around. So again skip the next one, go to the second over and do your crisscross as you normally had but without doing any back loops at this point. So this is what's keeping the features looking amazing. So skip one, second one over, double crochet and go to the one that you skipped by just leaning things forward and double crocheting into that one. Please do that all the way around for round number seven. So I'm doing my crisscrosses all the way around and I'm gonna go right to the end. And remember that there was no back loops required on this one so you got a little bit of a break. <laughs> as far as stitch work is concerned. So let's just join it to the top of the beginning chain three and then we're gonna change our story a little bit more. So that's actually, I gotta go right into a chain not to a space cause then it will be open. So remember this is a slouchy so it's gonna be here appearing bigger than what you probably are expecting. So if you're expecting a slouchy, good. <laughs> this is exactly what you're going for today. Let's go for round number eight. It's gonna be quite simple. So round number eight, we only have three more rounds left on this uh, hat in order to go to the brim. So you're almost there. So let's uh, begin. We're gonna chain up three, one, two, three and that counts as the stitch that that's coming from. So we're gonna go into the back loops only now again starting on the first one here and you're just gonna do one double crochet into each of the back loops all the way around. So just keep moving along. Back loop only one single crochet or sorry one uh, uh, double crochet by itself. I apologize for that. <laughs> it's kind of single is kind of what I meant but yeah you know what I'm saying. So one double crochet in each back loop all the way around. So it came up all the way around. Remember don't go into that one that looks like it's one and then just join it to the top of the beginning chain three. So we're gonna move on to round number nine. In round number nine we're gonna then get smaller in the forehead area to bring it back and balance. This is a slouchy so the back end ends up being a little bit bigger than the, the forehead area to give you that slouchy look. Let's uh, move along to round number nine. So as I just promised we're gonna do something slightly different in round number nine. We're gonna get a little bit smaller so we need to decrease some stitches out. So let's begin. We're gonna chain three. That counts as a double crochet and in the back loops only 
for the next three in a row. So one, two, and three. Let's just do it and then I'll explain what's gonna happen. So back loops only, double crochet for three in a row. So with that chaining of three that you started with that gives you the number four for double crochets that sit by itself. That's so important to remember that. So you got one, two, three, and four. So the next two are gonna be come together in the back loops only. So just wrap your hook going into the back loop of the next stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold. Go into the next one now. So don't let, the, don't finish this one. So wrap the hook going into the next back loop. Pull through, pull through two and hold. You now have three loops on the hook. Just pull through all three and those two just became one. So let's uh, begin to do the repeat pattern. So in the next four back loops, one double crochet by itself. So one, two and three and finally four. So there's four that sit by itself and then the next two are together. So to repeat how to do that, so you wrap the hook going into the next back loop, pull through, pull through two and hold. Go into the next one. So wrap the hook into the next back loop, pull through, pull through two and hold and then pull through all three. So continue that same idea. So four by itself, two together, four by itself, two together and I'll see you at the end of this revolution for number nine. As we come around in round number nine, the final two stitches are two together and that just keeps it within balance. So if you've been doing your uh, counts properly, the final last two will be two together and then you're just going to join it to the top of the beginning chain three. Let's move along to round number 10 which is the final revolution of doing this uh, hat before we start the brim and we're gonna do a reduction once again. So in the back loops only for the final revolution, we're gonna chain up one going into the same stitch for the first one and you're going to go in the back loops now for the next two. So with the first one plus these two that gives you a count of three single crochets in a row. So the next two will be then together in the back loops only. So just going in to the next one, pull through and hold. Going into the next one, pull through and hold. You have three loops on your hook, pull through all three and those two just became one. So the repeat pattern on this one is, is that there will be three single crochets in the back loops only in a row. And once you get that done, then the next two are together. So back loop only, pull through and then back loop only, pull through and then pull through all three. Please do that all the way around for number 10. And finally for round number 10, the last two in this revolution then is two together and you just join it to the top of the beginning uh, single crochet. So that's it. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna fasten off this yarn here. I'm gonna uh, just trim it about a foot long and what I want to do is that I just wanna pull it through the loop and I'm gonna put it on a darning needle and get rid of this strand. So we're not gonna go over this particular strand um, when we go to do the brim. So we want to hide it in right now. So just get that darning needle out and just if you weave it in and out of your work three times and this is a really thick yarn by the way so getting it through a thin needle like this may be a little bit of a challenge. So let me just pull one strand at a time. There we go, got it. So what I want to do is that if you go back and forth three times, you can hide it. So just coming right underneath the stitches, don't go on top of that edge because then you'll see it. Just right underneath and pull through. Just nice and kind of gently but firmly. Okay, and when I go to do it, I don't wanna pull it to the point where it's gonna wreck it. So now I'm gonna go in the other direction for two and then finally back in the other direction for three. So going in and out three times like this buries it and you will never see a loose end hanging out. So anything that's left hanging out at this point, you can just safely trim that down and that would be the finish point. So now we're ready to begin doing the brim. So the brim is actually gonna start, the seam line will probably stay at the back and the brim line is gonna move forward so that it stays on the front side of this hat. So let's begin to do the brim of the hat. Now the brim of the hat is using the smaller hook, a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook today. So we're right where we've done the fasten off, okay, right there, we're gonna now count and it says to join it here and then slip stitch but it doesn't slip stitch on the other side of this. So to me, I wouldn't do that. I would probably just count out the stitches and I'm gonna improvise on this pattern at this particular point point. and it says go to the eighth stitch. So just count, so just one, so I'm going in the direction I would have crocheted in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So right there is where I'm going to apply the new yarn. So I'm just gonna create a slip knot just to join it. Just right there and I'm gonna pull through. 
and I'm going to fasten it with a slip stitch just like that. Okay, so now we're gonna begin in doing the first row and remember it doesn't go all the way around the hat, it just stays on the brim. Let's do round our row number one. So let's begin and if you look at the pattern of the brim itself, you're gonna notice that there's um, some uh, single crochets followed by two single crochets into the same one to create an increase. If you actually write, look at your pattern really carefully, you'll notice that there's three single crochets in a row and then an increase, three single crochets in a row then an increase. But on the very front of the hat, there is four single crochets that are sitting by itself and then an increase. So you're gonna have three, three, four and then three, three. So right in the very front of your forehead is you'll have more single crochets that sit by itself. So let's begin. So in the same one that you just joined on to, what I want you to do is that I want you to put two single crochets into the same one. So one and two. Okay, so bury this one as you go. So I'm gonna take you through the whole first uh, row. So these next three will be one single crochet by itself. Okay, we're not going into any back loops, just into regular stitches. And now three are by itself. So this is the first of five quadrants, I guess, in the front brim. So the next one is gonna be two singles into the same one. So this is an increase. And then we're gonna move to the second quadrant of making this bigger. Okay, so the next three are by themselves. So one, two, and three. And then the next one is gonna be two into the same one. So that's two out of five quadrants. So this is gonna be the third one. So it's gonna be four single crochets in a row. So one, two, three, and four. That's the very front of the hat. And then the next one is gonna have two into the same one. Just like that. And then we carry on again. So the next three are by themselves. This will be quadrant four. So one, two, and three. And then the next one is two into the same one. And then the final quadrant of five is, is gonna be three by itself. So one, two, and three, just like that. And then the final one has two into the same one. So that is your first row uh, going all, uh, partially all the way around. See, just like that. So you see where it starts. This is the back seam here and you'll see it's pretty much equal. So let's turn our work and go for row number two and three because they're both the same. So I'm gonna give you instructions to do rows two and three because they're both identical at this time. You're gonna chain up one and then it's just one single crochet into each going all the way across. Then get to the other side, chain up one and then one single crochet all the way back and that's row number four. So this is, sorry, this is row number two that we're doing and then row number three. So just uh, please do one single crochet in each. Rows number two and three are now complete. So they're just regular single crochets into each. So rows number five, six, seven, okay, five, six, and seven. So rows two and three are now complete. Just one single crochet went into each. So now rows number four, five, six, and seven are all identical to each other. We're gonna start reducing on one side of the visor and also on the other side. So we're gonna reduce by getting smaller and smaller in the front. And you can kinda see that tapering off in the, in the model as well. So what we have is that you're gonna start off and the, all rows start off this way as well. So four, five, six, and seven. So just chain up one and you wanna put the two first together. So just going into the very first one, pull through and going into the next one, pull through just like this and then pull through all three. So the remaining now all the way to the other side is just going to be one single crochet into each. So keep doing that. So what you need to do is that when you get to the other side, you just need to put the final two together and you do this for rows number four, five, six, and seven. So this is gonna allow it to taper off beautifully and see how fast I can get myself over there to show you the other side. And it's gonna get quicker and quicker because you're essentially eliminating two stitches for every time you pass by when you're doing all of this. So I'm just visually looking for the final two so I'm not counting anything. Just makes it a lot easier. Okay, so I can see I got three stitches left. So the next one is fine for one single crochet and then the remaining now is gonna be put two together. Okay, 
So that was row number four. So you turn your work and let's do number no, row, <laughs> row number five. So chain up one. Okay, the first one here went two together. Okay, so just into the first one and into the next one. Put those two together and then just one single crochet back. I'm just kind of dropping my stitches a little bit. So I just have to just one single crochet all the way back to the other side. I'll take you back there because it'll look slightly different because now you're working with two togethers that are on the edges and it, you just gotta make sure you're not getting into the extra one that appears to be there when in fact it's actually just already leaning over. So I think that's a common error when people are crocheting those kind of two togethers right on an edge. Seen that in the snuggle sack series as well. We've used a lot of that for tapering especially within the tails of the creatures that we were working on. So let's uh, just continue and I'm almost there. I can feel it in the palm of my hand that it's coming around and there it is. Okay, so let's look at the here. So this here, these two became one, so it's one and two. So do you see that it could have looked like three? It's not. So just the final two are together like this. See, and it should go up on an angle just like that. So please do that. That was row number four. So please do uh, number, uh, sorry, that was row number five. So please do number six and seven. So two more rows of this and then we're gonna finish off with row number eight and finish off. So now I've just finished row number seven. So let's begin row number eight which is the final and it's a reverse single crochet. So this is uh, also called the crab stitch. So you wanna chain up one and we need to work in the reverse. We need to go behind and we've done this on many other examples but I'll show you how to do it if you're new. So you're gonna chain up one just like this and you're gonna come into the stitch right behind it, okay? So just insert into the last single crochet you were just in, okay? And then grab the yarn and pull through. Okay, and then grab the yarn and pull through two. So you're saying, okay, was well that any different? Absolutely. So let's do the next one. So we go into the stitch right before it. So we just go in right before, grab the yarn and pull through and then pull through the final two for your single crochet. You're gonna notice something and let's do another one. It takes about three or four before you actually see the design happening. Okay, it's called the reverse uh, reverse single crochet. See these lines? It's creating a beautiful border on the visor of your hat. And you're just continuing to reverse single crochet all the way across your visor. And now that because you've been reducing stitches, there's not gonna be a lot to work with. So you just keep moving along. And this particular stitch took me a little bit of time getting used to when I first started this one. And uh, I saw reverse single crochet, I almost choked. <laughs> Only to realize that it, uh, it's actually not a big deal. Did an Afghan actually using this concept um, in the trim. And it's usually a final stitch that is used uh, right at the end of a project in order to give the edging a beautiful finish and a different look other than the regular stitch work of crochet. And sometimes I don't always get it right so I'm continuing along. It's kind of an unnatural feel to it when you do it um, but the look is undeniable. The thing about it is too is that when you go to fasten off which I'll show you in just a moment is that you don't want to ruin that look. So okay so there you go. So that's the last one here and what I want to do now is that I want to fasten this off and I'm gonna leave a little bit of an extra long tail. Pull up my darning needle once again. I'm gonna pull this loop out and I'm gonna use this strand here now to hide in the ends and see if I can get that yarn through my darning needle. I think I need a bigger one for this yarn. It's a nice bulky uh, thick yarn. Feels good on the hands too. Okay, so now that I've got it through. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna slide this underneath. So this is the brim. So you, if you're gonna wear it and you're gonna fold it up, you're gonna wanna make sure you hide in this yarn real good. So you just wanna just glide right underneath the stitches and don't let it pop out in any areas that are really obsessive. And you may wanna move down to the actual real single crochet to kinda hide it into position because if you impede on this, you're gonna ruin that look. So just pull it through. So one. And if you go in and out three times, you can permanently hide that in. Cause this is bulky yarn, you'll have a good uh, opportunity to hide this in real good too. And that was two. And then finally back for number three. And if all else fails, 
just use your fingers. So it looks like I've lost one of my plies. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna retry again off camera and pull that through and that's how you would do it. So you just gotta use a thicker uh, needle at that point. So I'll see you back here in a second for a final roundup. So today we made this slouchy together and you can see that the brim folds down just like it does on the model like you see it there. You can wear it so that you have a brim to it or you can fold it up and you could apply a button right here on the corner as well if you wanted to kind of have a permanent fold. It will probably stay up on its own as well because of the way that it's designed. But I love the stitch work. I love the crisscross look to it. It was really quite simple and easy pattern to be able to master and also the slip stitching in the back was actually really kind of not invasive as well. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye now.